When we think of oviraptorosaurs, we typically imagine small creatures only about the size of a turkey. Gigantoraptor, however, was a completely different case. This dinosaur defied all expectations and shattered every rule as its immense size could rival that of an elephant. Towering on the floodplains of Inner Mongolia, Gigantoraptor was a great mystery, the most prominent member of its family. Its skeleton forced paleontologists to ask, how did a creature with feathers and a toothless beak grow to such a massive size? When the excavation in the Erlian Basin began in 2005, the expectation was routine. The site had already yielded several mid-sized theropods, so when a partial skeleton first appeared in the sand, the team assumed they were dealing with another modest predator. Something human sized perhaps slightly larger, but nothing extraordinary. Yet as more bones came to light, the dimensions quickly told another story, a femur far heavier than anticipated, a tibia long and powerfully built, and hand bones so large they dwarfed those of typical oviraptorosaurs. Discovered in 2005 and formally named in 2007 as Gigantoraptor earlianensis, this was not the kind of fossil anyone had come looking for. What made the discovery even more remarkable was the skeleton state of preservation. Unlike the fragmentary remains that usually turned up in the basin, this one was nearly complete. The holotype specimen catalogued as LHV 00011 preserved a near complete mandible, both forelimbs with much of the hands portions of the pelvis, nearly complete hind limbs and most of the tail. With that much of the animal intact researchers could reconstruct how it looked and moved with a higher degree of confidence than usual. Standing back from the prepared bones, the picture that emerged was of a creature vastly out of scale with anything known from its family. At first, paleontologists found themselves with a dinosaur that seemed to defy categories. Nothing comparable had ever been uncovered, and when they tried to situate it within the familiar family trees, it resisted easy placement. The most immediate suggestion was to treat it as part of the oviraptorosaurs, those mostly small parrot-beaked theropods common across Asia. Yet no other member of that group had approached such dimensions. In the original 2007 description, the research team placed it near Oviraptoridae, positioning it as a basal primitive offshoot that branched off before the smaller specialized forms appeared. It was at least a starting point, even if the label felt uneasy. That stopgap classification did not hold up for long. By 2010, reanalysis began pulling the skeleton away from Oviraptoridae, suggesting instead that it belonged closer to Canagnathidae. Later phylogenetic studies in 2014 reinforced that conclusion, consistently placing it as a basal canognathid. This shift was not superficial. It meant the animal was no longer simply a giant mistake at the start of its lineage, but evidence of a family of dinosaurs capable of producing extreme body sizes. The strongest clue came from its lower jaw. Unlike the short, crushing beaks of classic oviraptorids, this mandible was deep toothless and equipped with a prominent symphysial shelf that strengthened its bite. The combination of a deep, edentulous jaw and reinforced surfaces for muscle attachment aligned much more closely with canagnathid morphology than with typical oviraptorids. Canagnathids were already recognized for their more elongated and versatile beaks suited to processing a broader range of foods than the highly specialized oviraptorids. Gigantoraptor's anatomy fit that model only exaggerated to a scale no one had expected. Correcting one common misunderstanding is important here. Canagnathids were not limited to North America. They appear in both Asia and North America, and Gigantoraptor demonstrates that the family could attain gigantic size on the Asian side as well. Most Canagnathids were small to mid-sized, but this animal showed the upper limit of what the lineage could achieve. Its existence on the Mongolian plains erased the neat geographic distinction that had once separated the two groups and provided a striking new data point for how widely these bird-like dinosaurs had dispersed. Reclassifying Gigantoraptor also changed the picture of how these animals lived. Oviraptorids with their short, strong beaks were usually tied to a narrow feeding strategy, possibly specializing on nuts, tough seeds, or even shelled prey. Kynagnathids, by contrast, had lighter, more shearing jaws that may have allowed omnivorous habits, soft plant matter fruit, perhaps small animals, depending on circumstance. Gigantoraptor's massive but versatile beak and powerful jaw muscles suggested it was a heavy-bodied generalist capable of exploiting multiple food sources. This new placement made Gigantoraptor less of an evolutionary outlier and more of a logical, if extreme, outgrowth of its own family tree. 
Instead of an awkward fossil lingering on the margins, it became an example of just how flexible Caenognathid evolution could be. Smaller relatives could fill gaps as opportunistic feeders, while this colossus dominated larger niches, whether in competition for vegetation for nesting grounds or for space in its floodplain environment. Its size was no longer anomalous, but an extension of traits already present in the group dietary adaptability feathered bodies and lightweight builds, scaled up to almost unbelievable proportions. Seen in this light, Gigantoraptor did not break the pattern of evolutionary success among Canagnathids, but expanded it dramatically. What once appeared to be a paradox, an enormous bird-like dinosaur that dwarfed predators around it, was actually the natural endpoint of tendencies inherent in its lineage. It proved that size, diet and morphology among oviraptorosaurs were far more flexible than researchers had assumed and it forced paleontologists to re-examine assumptions about how bird-like dinosaurs evolved across continents. With its broader classification finally clarified attention turned back to the bones themselves. Those slender legs did not just indicate where Gigantoraptor sat on the evolutionary tree, they also hinted at how quickly it grew and surprisingly how fast it might have moved. Looking deeper into the fossil record of Gigantoraptor, its very bones gave researchers the key to its growth history. Histological analysis of the fibula revealed seven visible lines of arrested growth with at least four more inner zones missing due to bone remodeling. That pattern implied the animal died at around 11 years of age. Yet by that point, the skeleton had already achieved young adult size, showing that most of its bulk was reached within roughly seven years. This accelerated pace stood in stark contrast to large tyrannosaurids, which often required decades to reach comparable mass. The holotype itself was not even fully mature. Its secondary osteans were densely packed but incompletely remodeled, marking it as still growing when it died. Far from being an accident of preservation, the histology confirmed Gigantoraptor was a giant in the making, with adults likely even larger than the eight meter specimen described. That growth pattern was only half the story. The proportions of its hind limbs suggested an animal built for more agility than its size would lead you to expect. The tibia measured longer than the femur, yielding a tibiotarsus to femur ratio of about 1.07. The metatarsus at a little over half the femur length, approximately 0.53, also fit comfortably within the range of cursorial theropods known for running efficiency. These data were explicitly noted in the original description, unlike the thicker weight-bearing limbs of slow giants, Gigantoraptor had the relative proportions of a runner. Practical interpretation is cautious. You cannot assign exact top speeds, but the inference was clear. For an animal this large, its anatomy indicated it could sustain higher speeds than many other late Cretaceous giants. That capability may have changed how it interacted with the floodplain ecosystem, giving it flexibility to retreat from larger predators, pursue smaller prey, or quickly claim space around vital food resources. Such a combination of rapid growth and cursorial adaptation at such a scale was distinctly unusual. Most enormous dinosaurs compensated for mass with slower lifespans and sturdy stability-oriented legs. Gigantoraptor compressed growth into a quick trajectory and retained the running profile of far smaller co-allurosaurs. The end product was a feathered animal, almost the size of a tyrannosaur yet still capable of active ground covering movement. From an evolutionary standpoint, the pairing subverted the expected trade-offs between speed and body mass. But even with this unusual physiology mapped out growth and locomotion alone, could not explain how the animal actually fed or survived. To answer that, paleontologists turned to its most striking cranial feature, the enormous deep toothless beak which promised to reveal how a giant with such speed and size made its living. Unlike predators whose skulls announced their weapons with serrated teeth, Gigantoraptor presented paleontologists with something unexpected, a massive toothless beak. Ma and colleagues 2017 measured this feature in detail, showing that relative to its jaw length Gigantoraptor, had the deepest beak of any known canagnathid, with a relative beak depth ratio of about 1.4 to 2 in the holotype. That deep construction indicated leverage for powerful clamping forces. At the same time, the study noted what it lacked, a well-developed lingual triturating shelf that appears in more advanced 
canagnathids. This unusual mix suggested a, 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 a beak specialized for strength, but without the grinding surface, some of its relatives evolved. Investigating what this enormous beak could do meant piecing together clues from anatomy and the fossil record around it. Researchers have proposed several plausible research supported hypotheses rather than one definitive answer. First, the deep mandible combined with extensive areas for adductor muscle attachment pointed to significant bite force. Scarred ridges across the lower jaw mark where heavy muscles anchored to drive closure strength, allowing the beak to exert crushing pressure. Second, the articular glenoid of the jaw was dorsally convex, a trait that in living comparisons like sphenonodon allows some degree of propalinal or front to back movement. Such motion would aid in shearing action, making it possible to strip or slice through fibrous plant matter. Third eggs were a tempting possibility. The same flood plains that held Gigantoraptor also contained enormous macro longitulithus eggs, sometimes nearly two feet long, attributed to giant oviraptorosaurs. A beak powerful enough to clamp through resistant shells could have made eggs a substantial resource, though always as one among several food sources rather than the mainstay of its diet. These anatomical observations underline a simple conclusion. Gigantoraptor's feeding was versatile. Its jaw shape and muscle strength supported clamping and crushing. Its joint structure hinted at shearing. And the fossil context showed it lived near resources like vegetation and eggs that made each behavior relevant. Instead of pointing to a narrow specialization, the evidence fits a generalist diet, an omnivore capable of shifting strategies depending on seasonal abundance. Or as some researchers phrase it, the anatomy reveals a beak built to clamp, shear and possibly crush, making opportunism its most likely lifestyle. That flexibility had ecological consequences. On fertile floodplains, where seasonal change could swing from lush growth to scarcity, the ability to switch diets would have conferred real resilience. During wetter phases, Gigantoraptor may have stripped leaves and stems efficiently. In drier times, it could have exploited tougher material, cracked hard fruits, or investigated nesting colonies for eggs. Its size did not restrict it to one category of food, but instead expanded its range. This adaptability would have buffered the species against the instability of late Cretaceous ecosystems and reduced direct competition with more specialized herbivores or carnivores. Researchers also note the beak may have doubled as a tool for defense or confrontation. Modern large birds such as cassowaries or ostriches can deliver serious bites despite lacking teeth and scaled up to dinosaur proportions. Gigantoraptor's jaw structure could have served to deter rivals. A sharp strike or forceful clamp made the beak not only a feeding instrument, but a potential weapon. This defensive function would have reinforced its survival advantages in landscapes where competition for food and nesting sites was intense. The toothless beak, once thought a limitation, in fact widened the animal's options. It supported plant processing, made eggs and other hard resources accessible, and provided leverage as both a feeding tool and deterrent. Far from reducing its effectiveness, it added to the traits that made Gigantoraptor a successful giant among more specialized neighbors. Understanding the function of its beak completes the picture drawn from its bones, an animal that grew rapidly maintained surprising speed and sustained itself with flexibility. Each of those traits showed that even bird-like features often thought to be limited to small dinosaurs could scale to immense size. And in revisiting its anatomy, paleontologists began to realize the broader significance of what this single fossil had revealed. Gigantoraptor demonstrated that features usually linked to small bird-like dinosaurs, feathers, toothless beaks, and fast growth could scale up to a giant rivaling top predators. Bone histology showed it reached young adult size in only seven years, while its deep mandible and cursorial limb proportions pointed to a powerful versatile feeder capable of exploiting many resources with surprising speed. Together, these traits redefine what bird-like dinosaurs could achieve. If Gigantoraptor surprised you, hit like and tell us in the comments which part struck you most, its beak, its growth, or the image of a giant runner with feathers. New finds and eggshell studies hint that more large-beaked oviraptorosaurs could exist, so the fossil record may still have big surprises.